Of yes, I can. But I, I'd like to put them here as well. Because yeah, I, I, I leave the blackboard for some other things, like the assessments, so don't get confusion. Yeah, especially because it's organized this way in weeks, and I put the videos there, so you can get the, the slides with the videos at the same time. When in the blackboard, it requires more processing, and yeah, that's, that's why. But um, the f uh, once we sh we're sure that the blackboard is working, stable, we're going to be moving from here to there. You have some water dripping? I've seen like some drop coming in. You're waiting for it? Ready? <laughs> well, I, I should, I should, yeah, I should maybe <coughs> contact. Okay, Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. Let's start. The two-dimensional arrays, actually, they're not very far from what we've seen before in the one-dimensional array, except that there's one small difference, is that it has more data. And the, I mean, in terms of more data, is the, the way we organize the data actually is different. Not only having more data, but it's dif organized differently. So this is the plan for today's lesson. We're going to be talking about the two-dimensional arrays, what they are, how to use them, and why are they useful, and then how to declare them, how to implement them, how to work with them, and how to initialize them. And there's some very special two-dimensional arrays that we're going to be talking about right there. OK, uh, so the two-dimensional arrays are something that comes in sort, sort of metrics or table. Like, for example, in this case, we'd like to, we have seven students, they have grades every week. For five weeks, we know their grades, each one of them. And then we s would like to keep this structure like this. We'd like to save the data like this. We have like different students and uh, all the five weeks, for example. We could do this with one dimensional array, but then we have to declare seven one dimensional arrays, like student one of five weeks, student two, five. I mean elements, student 3, student 4, and so on. But then if you have like 100 students, it will take a lot of declarations. So we can declare one two-dimensional array, and then we specify this is how many students we have, on how many rows we have, and this is how many columns we have. And then we can use it the same way we used an array, by using indices, the index. For example, in, in, in here, for example, we'd like to get the grade 42, this is for the student 0 for the week 1, right? So we start always with the rows and then the column to identify any element. The grade of student 3 in week 4, we go to student 3 and then you go for week 4 and then this is 93. And this is how you go, always from the rows to the column. This is the only thing that might get you confused if you forget what are we looking for first. The first number that we give to access or to uh, get to the values inside of a two-dimensional array e are, are the rows. The first number are for the rows, the second number are for the columns. So this is how it works. Okay, uh, so we said that this works like with two indices instead of one, and this is how we, how we represent that. Instead of like having only one set of brackets, we have two sets of brackets, one for the rows and the other one for the columns. So now if I'd like to, let's say, access the element 0, 0, this is element 0, 0, first row, first column. What about this one, element 1, 2? So the row 1, the column 2, so this is the place for that, right? Okay. And same thing again, 2, 1. Always don't get confused. If you start from here, you're getting lost. Second line of has line number 2, and then column number 1. And that's it. That's the only thing for the arrays. The rest, this is the only rule. 
But you know, dealing with this rule sometimes can get confusing. But you have just to always follow this rule. How to declare a uh, two-dimensional array? Very easy when you know how to declare a one-dimensional array, because you just need to add another dimension, another set of brackets. And of course, you specify the number of rows and the number of columns. And that's it. Let's see some examples. Uh, like for here, we have an array that we call A. It has three rows, three columns. And if we'd like to access the 0, 1, that is, this is the line 0, column 1, this one. And if we'd like to access 2, 0, 2, 0, so this is the one. And if you, you, you can have, it doesn't have to be in the same number of rows and columns. Uh, it, can have, it can be any number. So in this case, for example, 4, 5, 10, 2, 10, 1. Why not? This is a two-dimensional array, but we have like only one column. It's some sort of a weird two-dimensional array, but still it's possible. So now we have like four, four rows, one, two, three, four, and then five columns, one, two, three, four, five. And the same principle again. You just start from zero, don't forget, and then zero, three, this is it, and then two, one, you go to line two and one, and so on. Uh, the size is different Maybe the from the element. The size is five, yes. The element, uh, start from zero to five. Yeah, I mean, the indexes, don't call them elements, because the elements are the values inside of the array. The values are called elements. But the indices, the size, for example, you said the size is five, but the indices start from zero to size minus one to four. So y what you said is right, except that just you change elements by indices. You're welcome. <coughs> OK, so let's have a look at this uh, two-dimensional array. We have like 3 by 3, so this is the, the, the array. And then we would like to put some value inside of it. As we, the same thing, same idea as we were doing with the one-dimensional array, we're going to be doing it with the two-dimensional arrays, except now we need two numbers to specify where to put the value in. <coughs> Sorry. <coughs> so 0, 1 will result in 15 being in. First line in the middle. OK, what about this one now? Now, this is when it might become a little bit, I mean, confusing if we don't fo follow the rules. So actually, what we're doing here, we're getting the content of A01, which is 15. So this is 15 plus 4, that makes it 19. Where are we putting this 19? In the row number two, column zero, so this should be 19 right here, right? Let's see. That's correct. So that's pretty it. This is not really complicated. Actually, now dealing with it, it's a bit now a bit of processing. If you'd like to uh, work with those arrays, actually, you need to understand how they work. Because you remember, as we were using this dot length for the uh, one-dimensional array, and we were very happy to use it because it's very convenient. But how will it work with the two-dimensional array? How do we know? Because now we need not only one value; we need the number of columns, uh, sorry, number of rows, and number of columns. So we need two values, and we have only dot length. So how can we get those two values by using only the dot length? Well, there's a way. But we need first to understand how internally those two dimensional arrays are stored in the memory. So when we have something like this, which is a two dimensional array of six rows, four columns, what happens is that we have something like this. It's like we have an array of arrays. And each array, it points to something that has four columns. This is how it is internally. So if you look at it as just one big box, well, this is how we humans look at it. But inside of the computer, it's like one set of, it's like one array that with pointers to another or different arrays. Which means now, if I'd like to know how many rows, what should I use? 
s dot length. So this s dot length are going to be giving me the number of rows. But what about the columns? Then about the columns, I need to get this dot length. But what is this? This is s0, for example, or s1, or s2, s3, anything. If, if I take this one, which is s0, 1, 2, 3, 4. So this is s4. S4 dot length would be equal to what? Four. And S0 dot length? Four. All of them are four, so that's fine. I can take any one. Well, let's start from zero, and then give me the, this, the result. So this is how I can get the number of columns or the number of rows. If I use just, for example, with the S, I have two-dimensional array, I had just use S dot length, it is going to give me the number of rows. If I'd like to know the number of columns, well, I need to go to s0 dot length because s0 is an array, and that array I can ask what is the length of it. So that's the same idea. Uh, I don't know if I was able to explain it easily for to you. So now, si, but you have to declare i first. What is i? Okay, but declare it because if you put si, I cannot tell you which i is it. Because if you put i is equal to 10, well, si dot length is not going to work. Understand my point? So that's why I'm asking what is inside of i. You can, well, you can put anything you want, but we have to be careful to not be out of the limit. So the limit here from 0 to 5. So if you put 5, S5, that's fine. You can put S, any I or 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, it would be okay. But then something different is not acceptable. So to get the number of columns, you can use S0, you can use S1, you can use S2. Any number is okay. But generally what we do, we took the S0 because it's the obvious one, the first one that we take. But you can take, it, it will work with any number. So this is how we get the number of rows number of columns again s dot length give you the number of rows s0 or s1 or s anything dot length will give you the number of columns depending on if the number that you gave here is a valid index for the for the rows <coughs> and I think that's that's uh, something that is what do you mean by invalid limit Uh, actually, uh, this notation is is not uh, is not I mean a statement. That means we're not going to put six inside of length s dot length. We're not putting four inside of s zero dot length because this isn't possible. It's not possible. It just uh, this is like some sort of a mathematical representation. It tells you what's inside of s length is going to be six. What's inside of s zero dot length is four. Well, that's a good question that you ask because. We cannot put something into dot .length. Dot .length will give you some information. You cannot change that information. So it gives you well, how many rows or how many columns. But it doesn't, you cannot change that. If you want to change it directly, you can't. You have to declare another array, and then this is going to be changed automatically. So this is not representing a statement which means 6 put it inside of s.length. No, I said yeah. previously, uh, Here. I'm talking about when I'm saying about invalid numbers are here. What are the invalid numbers that we cannot put here? <coughs> like what? That was your question. Okay, so your question is what are the numbers that makes this invalid? Okay, but you know, uh, the other question also that I imagined was also a good question because I didn't want you to understand that we are putting something inside the exit land. But let's now talk about the other question, which is. What are the values that makes this invalid? Uh, more than three. More than three? Six and more. Six and more? More than five. More than five? Uh, the size one. Uh, which one? The array size, they are like two sizes now. The rows or the columns? S0, is it the number of rows or number of columns? Rows. 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 Okay. So how many rows do I have? No, how many rows do I have? 
need to count how many rows I have six rows the number of those rows starts from 0 to 5 so if I put 0 it's okay if I put 1 okay 2 3 4 5 okay if I put 6 that's not possible there's no s6 there's no a box here with s6 because I have 0 1 2 3 4 and 5 that's the maximum that I have I cannot have 6 so if you put 6 here that's invalid 7 8 and you go it's invalid if you put minus 1 obviously it's invalid so that's that's what I mean by putting some valid values which are there some valid indices that are but don't forget this is the first one that we see the first brackets are for the row so we're looking for these numbers to be respecting the maximum number of rows minus one row no I want to, to find how many columns yes so in order for me to find how many columns I take one row and I count what's the length of that row and it gives me a column take any row but you need to take a row so I'm, s I'm saying take the first row and then find, find what's the length of it you can say the same thing okay I would like to take the row number 5 S5 and dot length and it's going to be equal whatever you put number 0 1 2 3 4 5 it's going to be okay for this type of arrays we're going to see at the end of this this lecture this this presentation there are some very weird arrays that this is not going to be working the same the same way what about the the rows well we've seen that how to get the rows just use s dot length well actually you're getting it wrong uh, internally when as you can see if count how many how many according to your representations how many rows do we have here oh sorry how many columns do we have here uh, how many columns? yeah we have four. one two three four, three four five and we said we have four. so that's why you, your idea of this is not representing the table it is representing the internal representation on inside the computer how it is represented but it doesn't mean that this is we have like six column, five columns here we don't have five columns we have four so how these columns are organized how this array is organized this is it shows you how it is organized it's like internally we have one array of other arrays so if I'd like to get the number of rows I need just to get the first array that has a pointer to other arrays so I'm just saying how many other arrays do we have and this is going to give me how many rows and then when I would like to know each row how many columns it has I pick one row and tell how many was the size of it okay but good I like those questions because they make things clearer then if you have any please bring more any other questions in the back sure sure it's more than clear it's funny okay let's go uh, now if we'd like to initialize the array uh, the two-dimensional array initialize the two-dimensional array means means what what do we mean by initialize something put the initial values inside of it okay so we'd like to put some values inside of the array we've seen that when one dimensional array we were using a for loop in order to be able to put one by one the values inside of it well, now we have two dimensional arrays how can we do that well we need two the two for loops look at this and don't get confused because there are two ways on how to fill the array okay the two ways are I'm going to go one by one row wise when I finish a row I go and continue the next one or I can go column wise by going first co one column at a time so we're going to see both methods and see what are the differences and how to deal with them but generally this is what most of the time we are doing if we don't force you into doing something you're free to do whatever you want but if somebody becomes 
picky and he wants to ask you, no, I would like you to do this column-wise or whatever. So you have to be able to answer that. So uh, now I'd like to make sure that you realize, look what we're doing for the first four. So a dot length in this case is, well, this three, because this is the <coughs> number of the rows. And a i dot length, i is equal the first time 0, 1, 2, that's it. So from 0, 1, 2, so and this is for a0, that's this one. What's the length of this one? 3. a1, that's this one. What's the length of this one? 3 again. So anyone is going to get always give us 3. Actually, we can also put a0, it should be okay. That's fine. But okay, this a0 of length is going to give me, or ai of length is going to be 3. So now the first time, let's go back and try to follow up now. We need to follow up our i's. Our, our i and our j yeah so let's follow up so what is the result of this let's understand I mean, in this example i'm not showing you the way to always initialize a two-dimensional array i'm saying i'm showing you just one example of that and i'm just actually they are introducing this something like this just to make something change but we can put for example all zeros it's okay we can put all all of them zeros or all of them ones or all of them 100 whatever I can put any value that I like or I can put something that comes from the user and put something like KB dot next next what because it's an int I can say next int so in this case the numbers are coming from the user okay so th I don't want you to focus on this this is just any operation any value that I'm putting in there so let's follow up. I just f uh, erased my i and j. We've seen how two nested loops work. We get into the first one, and then we don't get from the second one until we finish it. And then we go back to the first one, get inside the second one, and continue again until we finish all of the loops. So now i is 0. Is i less than 3? Yes, I get inside, I'll put 0 inside of j, and I'm asking is j less than 3? Yes. Okay, now let's don't get confused. What should I put, and where should I put? First of all, what is this i plus j? 0 plus 0, easy, 0. What am I doing with this 0? I put it inside 0, 0. 0, 0, that's here. So I'm putting, okay, I uh, forgot about those. Zero. I'm putting zero there. Yes. Very easy. Alhamdulillah. We feel comfortable. Let's see if we can still be comfortable after the, we finish the first loop. What's happening now? No. Increment i. Increment i. No. Because I'm still in j, I cannot leave j until this question becomes false. And actually, when I finish this, I cannot ask this question until I increment again. Yeah. So don't forget, you see, we become lost even just after the first easy step. So let's roll back and do it again. So we put 0 here. The next step is increment j. So j becomes 1. Is 1 less than 3? Get inside. Now, a0... 1, 0, 1. So this is somewhere I'm going to put something. 0 plus 1. So I'm going to put 1 there. Next step again. What is the next step? J becomes 2. So I'm incrementing J. 2 less than 3? Yes. A, 0, 2. A, 0, 2. So here. 0 plus 2. 2. So I'm going to put 2 here. Now, let me sh show me that you have understood the concept. What's next now? No, we increment j again. We have, we're here. We need to increment j. We cannot leave this loop until the question is asked. And we cannot ask the question until we increment. We update. 
So yes, now j becomes three, and this this way is three less than three. No, now I can get out of this, and then I find myself that there's nothing else to do. Next thing, increment i now. So now that I increment i, i becomes one. Is one less than three? Yes. What's what should I do now? J, put zero in J, yes. Don't say just J because I know there's J, but what should we do with J? This is what's interesting. Okay, so now J becomes zero again. Is zero less than three? Yes. A, one, zero, which is one, zero here. What should I put? Zero plus one, one plus zero, that's one. Then? J becomes two. Very good. Don't, don't get confused. Now, J becomes uh, one. Sorry, one less than three. Yes, A one one. I'm putting one plus one two. And then J becomes two. Two less than three. Yes, A one two. A one two. One plus two three. So I'm going to be putting three here. Now j becomes 3. Is 3 less than 3? No, get out. Then increment i, i becomes 2. 2 less than 3? Yes, I get inside. j becomes 0 again. 0 less than 3? Yes, i is 2. So a to 0, I'm going to put zero plus, uh, 2 plus 0. So now this is done. i is 2, so just don't get confused. 2, 0, that's 2 here. And then j becomes 1, 1 less than 3, a2, 1, that means here, is going to be 2 plus 1, 3. And then j becomes 2, this one, not that one. 2 less than 3, yes. 2, 2, equal 4. j becomes 3. Is 3 less than 3? No. Get out. I becomes 3. Is 3 less than 3? No. I get out. And then this is what I have finished. And this is what I have achieved. So row-wise, I finish the row. Then I go back to the next row. And then I go back to the next row. Same principle. If we'd like to do that now from columns, well, now I just need to do a slight modification. Look what I'm doing here. This is the column. So this is 3, which is this column, the number of columns. And this is now the number of rows, this 3 over here. And then look what I'm doing. Instead of ij, is ji. So instead of that's it, and the rest is going to be the same code. And this is going to be filling this 0. And then because when we get here, the j becomes, it was 0. And then it becomes 1. And then it becomes 2. While the i doesn't change. So i stays 0. And then j becomes 0, 1, 2. And then, as you can see, same thing again. There's only one small minor thing that I would like you to realize is that if I do column-wise, I don't put i there. This is, as you can see, the difference between these two. I just swapped the position. But the i here will not work. If I put i, it is not going to work. I think we're talking about this later on, yeah. Why is it not going to work? Because if I put something like this, i becomes 0, a i exists i becomes 1, a i exists, I b then you know, i is incremented, becomes 2, a2 exists, and then it becomes 3, so I can ask this question to become false. Is a3 dot length exists? No. So this is going to throw so array index out of bound exception, because i is going to become, when you get out of the loop, it's going to become, uh, sorry, 3, equal to 3. And if I'm asking what is a of 3, 
while I don't have a of 3 because my array has 0 to 2. So when you start with these and you have this i here, just make sure that you don't get these errors. So this is especially if you'd like to do something like this, which is like column wise. Don't put i here. So you have to put the 0 because this is how it sh should work. If you don't put the 0, you put i, you're going to be having an error message. So you see it starts easy and then we keep adding stuff and things becomes a little bit a lot of details to take care of. Okay, so this is uh, about that uh, column wise. Okay, some minor things. Uh, we know how to put our own values in a one dimensional array. We just declare and then put the values directly. We can do the same with two dimensional arrays, but this time we have more than one value. You can see that now I'm showing this something like this, which means this is the first row. And this is the second row, and the third row, and so on. You notice that I have a brace, and inside that brace, I have another brace. So this is because this is how we should represent that. So if I'd like to put my own values, I need to use a lot of braces. I open, I close, and then inside of this is my all my array, and then I can specify all the different lines or rows one by one. You can see that each value is separated with a comma, as normal, but then each array is separated with a comma as well. I don't have to go back to the line, actually. For the computer, you can just put them all in one line. But this is more useful to, for us to be able to see it clearly. So this is what is going to happen. The first value is going to be at the first, the second, and the second, and so on. OK, now there's some very interesting arrays. Sometimes, for some reasons, we don't want to have all our arrays of all the same size, all the same columns. You agree, right? I am sure you agree. So let's say, for example, we have some students in different sections. And for example, I just would like to have like 100 students. And some of them, they took exam on every week. And some of them, they took every exam every three weeks, let's say. So um, if I declare all the array to have the same number of rows, same number of columns, I'll be having a lot of empty spaces that I'll never use. So they came up with the idea, of, I'd like to be flexible and to be declaring arrays with a specific number of rows, but then each row has a specific number of columns. Let's talk about this. Look at this thing over here. I'm declaring an, a two-dimensional array. I'm specifying that I will have four rows, but the columns are not fixed. And I will fix them one by one as I need them. So the first row, it has four columns. The second row has six columns. The third row has three columns. And the fourth row has five columns. So I'll be having something like this. It's possible in Java. Most probably, you'll never use it, or maybe rarely you're going to use it. But you should know that it exists, and you should know how to work with it. So let's say for this case, if I do S02, is this? Wh what's S02? This is 0, 0, 1, 2. So this is S02. What about this one? S14. 0, 1, 0, 1, 2, 3, 4. So it should be here. And what about this one? 0, 1, 2. OK, good. And what about this one? S, 2, 4. Am I too quick? Look at S, 2. What's the maximum that we have? 3 minus 1. I mean, this is the value that should be here. 3 minus 1, 0, 1, 2. And then I'm saying 4 doesn't exist. So this is going to give me array out of bound exception. So don't get confused. S2 to the row? S2 to the row. Always the first number is for the rows, the second number for the columns. So that's why with the ragged arrays, it becomes a little bit difficult to uh, follow up. And But you need to 
make sure that you do the things right. You can always check that the number here should be 1 minus this s2.length, but you have to be careful that all the values that you choose should be valid. Uh, all the values that you use should be valid. And this is a ragged array. This is how, how we can use them, how we can declare them. And just make sure that when you use it, for example, s35 is invalid because this is 0, 1, 2, 3, and I have 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, and there's no 5. And I can also initialize them in something like this. For example, this is a way how to declare ragged arrays with just values. Now I have how many rows? One, two, three rows. So it's like I'm declaring this to be a, the size of, sorry, int. The number of rows is three, and the number of columns, well, it's variable because it depends on each one of them. So this is how many columns in the first one? Three. Two in the second one, five in the third one. So I'm going to end up with something like this. So that's why I said um, as um, before, the sometimes when we would like to, when do we need to use these regular arrays? When we have some different records that don't have the same size and we'd like to keep them all together in one place and then not lose some spaces because if you declare something in the memory you're going to be taking that memory and reserving that so no other application can use it and if you take that space you never use it you're making the computer become slow if, because if, if everyone who develops an application takes some space that he never uses well then this is not you know very efficient And uh, s the last things I'm going to be talking about is this uh, some of the process, the two dimensional arrays processing, and then probably if we have some time, we can go for some exercises, inshallah. How to display two dimensional arrays? We do have time. Uh, like we did with the one dimensional array, we used one four. Well, for to do two dimensional arrays, we're going to be using nested fours. So two nested fours. So you can see as the same idea from i0 to s dot length, so the number of rows, j0 to si dot length, I could have used also s0 dot length because this is not a ragged array, all they have the same size. And then, but if I use si, this is more general, so it will work with any type of array. And then what I'm doing, display sij, put a space without going back to the line, and then when I finish all the line, I go back to the line and then I do the next line. So I finish one line, go back to the line. Finish another line, go back to the line. F display one by one and again go back to the line. Some other things, for example, if I'd like to find the average of each row, let's say I like for the first example, we said we have some students and we have some grades for each week. And then we'd like to have like the average of all these weeks. How to do that? Well, we can do, let's say, imagine that we have something like this, three by three. And we declare an array of averages, which is, this is something interesting. Average is an array, one dimensional array. S is a two dimensional array. What's the size of S? Three by three. So I have three by three. And then the size of average is what is s dot length? Number of rows or number of columns? <laughs> number of rows. How many rows do I have in s? Three. So this is going to be three, and I can. It's like I'm declaring the average to be something like three. Actually, we always used to represent arrays like this, right? But what if I represent them differently with something? Let's see how the representation, representation something like this. This is s. This is average. It's okay because this is zero, one, two. Same, same idea, just instead of putting it in one line, I put it in this representation, vertical representation. Now look what is going on here. 
I have two double four, but uh, after that, every time I start to the four, average of i, what is i? First time, i is zero. Second time, i is one. Third time, i is two. So the first time I put zero here, and then I do some calculations. Actually, this is, I'm calculating the sum. S, i, j, let's, let's follow this thing, so we don't get confused. So we have i and j. Average of something, we have it there. And then the first thing that we do, let's start here. We put 0 into i. And then we ask, is i less than s dot length? What is s dot length? 3, we said. So is 0 less than 3? Yes. Average of 0, put inside of it, 0. So I'm going to put, imagine that this is 0, 1, 2. I'm going to put 0 here. Okay, now I find this loop here. I put 0 inside of j. Is j less than si dot length? What is si dot length? Number of columns of 0. The first one, how many columns it has? 3, so this is going to be 3. Actually, it's going to be 3 for any i. And then I get in j is 0, i is 0. Average of 0 is equal to average of 0, which is, what is this equal to? 0. Plus Sij. What is i? 0. What is j? 0. Sij is? So 0 plus 92. And I'm putting 92 inside. Average of i. This place over here. Everybody agrees? I'm seeing some eyes that says no. Should I do it again? Yes. If you understand this step, the rest is going to be easy because you're going to see, I mean, as, as we're going to finish with one row, it's going to be easier to understand the rest. So let's understand this first row, what's happening. We said the first time we put 0 in i, and then we ask the question, it's true. We put 0 into average of i. What is i? Zero. It's 0 in this case. So in every 0, I'm going to put 0. So now I'm putting 0 in j. I'm asking the question, it's true. I get inside. Average of 0, I'm going to put the numbers here. This is 0, 0. So s00, zero, zero, we said, this is s00, zero, zero, this is 92. So this is equal to 92. Average of 0, what is average of 0? What's inside of average of 0? 0. So 92, 0 plus 92. What am I doing with this 92? Put it inside average of 0. So this place over here is going to be now 92. Do you agree? So now let me erase those and this becomes 92. Fine. Let's move. Let's continue. This is this is a for loop. I haven't finished in this for loop. I cannot get inside. I get out and execute this line. There are no braces, but that means the only there's one statement inside of it. So I finish with this. The next step: increment j. J becomes one. One less than three? Yes. Average of zero. What is uh, sorry? Average of i. What is i? Zero. So this is average of 0 is equal to average of 0 plus S0, J, 1. 0, 1, S0, 1, this is S0, S0, 1, 88. So this is 88 plus average of 0, that's 92. So 92 plus 88, 180. What am I doing with this 180? Average of 0. So this 92 is gone. And let's remove this as well. Let's erase this. <coughs> we said this is now 180. Next step. J becomes 2. Is 2 less than 3? Yes. 
average of i, i didn't change, it stays 0. So 0, 0, s0, i, 2. So s0, 2, that's 75. 75 plus 180, that means? 235? 55. 55. Yeah, I was hearing 235. So 255. 255. And then I increment j, that becomes 3. Is 3 less than 3? No. I get out, and then I find myself having to execute this. Average of i, i0. i0. I zero, so S zero of uh, a zero dot length. This is equal to three. So we have three columns. That means in in this row zero, that's three. Average of zero. This is two fifty five. Two fifty five divided by three. Twenty five by three. 85, uh, so 8 times 3 is equal to what, 24, then we have 15, 85, good, mashallah, or were you using the calculator, thank you, mashallah for the, f for the speed of using the calculator, okay, so this is going to be now, 85 that I'm putting inside every zero. So I should have erased this now and I'm going to put inside of it 85. I finished all these. Uh, let's let's erase everything because I have F F 85. Now what's the next step? I becomes 1 and then I do the same thing now with one, i is becoming one, and then I'm going to start from j0, etc. I'm going to read all this one, one plus this plus that, and at the end when I finish, divide by three, and then I put it here. So I'm going to have the, these different values. If you don't trust me, you can calculate them. But you get the point. For every line, I take one value at a time, I add it to the sum, and I sum it, and I put it here. Actually, I put it in average just to save some space, but I could have just put it in another variable. But then anyways, I just put it in here, and then at the end, I divide it by 3, and then I put it back to average, and this is going to be the average, actually. While I'm here, this average is not exactly the average, it's like the sum, but when I get out and divide by 3, now it becomes the average. So this variable is used like for two things, for storing the sum, and then when I'm done, I calculate and put the, the average inside of it. That's it the slide that gives some relief okay so uh, there's some sections there's some exercise that I, I put online that you should you go, go and you know some self-test exercises not much but you know have this one uh, at the end of this also we have some exercises that we're going to be uh, doing and let's start with this first exercise for example I just would like us as, as uh, an exercise to write a program that creates a two-dimensional array Fills it using scanner, that means you put the values from the user, then display that array and print the sum of every column. Columns, at the end of it, we'd like to have the sum. Not, not the rows, have the average. The columns have the sum. So something very easy to start with it, inshallah.